are going through this new series called To All the Words I've Said Before. To All the Words I've Said Before. It's, and so I hope that you will learn a lot from this series. I think this is something that we should uh, uh, kumbaga, annually talk about because many times we fail to say the right things. We use words that will hurt someone. Ina mo yung katabi mo, nasaktan mo na ba yan sa salita mo? Anong sinabi mo? Isigaw mo ngayon. Hindi, joke. Wag. Okay. <laughs> May, uh, eto, question ko sa inyo lahat. Meron ba kayong salita na sana hindi mo nasabi? Di ba? Ano yung salita na sana hindi mo nasabi dun sa crush mo? Dun sa kaibigan mo? Dun sa kapamilya mo or kapuso mo? Okay? What's that word na sana hindi mo sinabi? Di ba? Meron tayong mga ganun. And um, this series is all about that. It, this series is all about um, guiding us, uh, to guide us what words to use, how we will be able to build up rather than break someone down. And so, that's our seed for today, to all the words that I've said before. Before anything else, can we just bow our heads and let's pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up this time to you. Guide us, Holy Spirit. Have it your way. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> So, bear with me. Uh, yung buong pa- family ko may cough ngayon, so baka umubo ako. So, <laughs> but uh, please pray for me as well and my family. Because my ba- my, my four-month-old baby, uh, he has cough. So, please pray for him. Kasi mahirap yun for, for a baby. Okay. So, may salita ka ba na sana hindi mo sinabi? So, what are words? <clears throat> what are words? The, the standard definition for what words are based on a dictionary is this. A single distinct meaningful element of speech or writing. A single distinct meaningful element of speech or writing. And that's what we've known what words are. We use words daily, okay? Every, every time we speak, we use words. We don't use uh, nguso or... <laughs> we use words. Every time we text, we use words. Um, every time we post something in Facebook, we use words. So words are everywhere. That's why we have to talk about this. Because there is a danger using those words. There is a good thing about words and there are bad things about words. So, words are very important. Especially in this series. Tell your seatmate. Word. Alam mo pag nagrarapa? Word. Okay. <laughs> word. That's, and that's what we're going. And even the Bible, we call it God's word. And so, um, this series is important for us. For this series, I want to focus on this definition of what words are. Words are what comes out of our mouths. It can break us, it can build us, it can heal us or kill us. Words are powerful. Okay, can we, can you just repeat that with me? One, two, three, go. Words are what comes out of our mouths. It can break us, it can build us, it can heal us or kill us. Words are truly powerful. And the reason why we must talk about this new series is this. Marami nang nasaktan dahil sa salita mo. Marami na. Hindi mo lang alam. (laughs) <laughs> marami nang naiyak dahil sa sinabi mo. Marami nang napaasa dahil rin sa pinangako mong salita. Marami nang nalito, naguluhan dahil di nila naintindihan ang ibig sabihin ng mga salita mo. Marami ring bu- buhay, ito, ito yung totoo, marami ng buhay ang nawala dahil may sinabi kang mali. And so, words are very important. Do you know how powerful words are? Words can break us, can build us, can heal us, and can kill us. What, what was happening in the video was that she's being bullied and the words literally slaps her on the face, uh, pushes her to the, to the lockers. You know, words hurt. You know what Jack uh, Schaefer um, said? Words cannot change reality, but they can change how people perceive reality. Words create filters through which people view the world around them. A single word can make the difference between liking a person and disliking that person. I'll give you an example about the power of words. You're in the same class. Look at your, your classmate right now. Look at your classmate. So you're in the same class, your friends. Uh, beside you is your classmate. Beside you is your barkada in school. And so you're in the same class for three years now, same batch and same classmates. Then suddenly, there's a new student being introduced by your teacher. And one of your classmates whispers to you and says, Sabi na, wag taro dumikit yan. B-I yan. And so what would you do? Many of us will respond by not getting to know that person. Because someone, your friend, your barkada, someone that you trust said, B-I yon. 
Another example. You're in the same class, same batch, same classmates. A new student is introduced. The girls are wildly clapping for this new guy kasi ang guapo niya. And then your friend whispers to you, mayaman raw yan, mahilig bang libre kaibiganin natin? <laughs> what would you do? Siyempre kakaibiganin, libre, libre ang pagkain every day. It's same scenario, same dif- uh, but different descriptions. Did the words change anything? Yes. What other people say about other people changes the way we think of a person. What other people say about another person changes the way we think of a person. That's why words are powerful. That's why we have to be careful. Words have power. He, uh, who here has been bullied? Oh, marami. Maraming Kristiyanong nabubuli talaga. Okay? Yan ang katotohanan. So, words have power. If you have been bullied, I was bullied when I was very young. Ang cute ko raw kasi. Kaya nabubuli ako. I was bullied to believe that I was worthless and nothing. One particular student likes to bully me. And this particular student, whenever we're in PE, he will always call me names by saying, ang baho ko, baho, baho, baho. Ganon. And siyempre, sirang-sira yung ano ko, pag-aaral ko dahil sa kanya. <laughs> because every time may opportunity, talagang he will name call me. Uh, <clears throat> there was this one time, sabi ko, mag recite ako sa class. And this guy, the same guy who bullied me, said, ang arte mo. Meron, bang ganun, meron, meron ka bang ganong bully? Okay? Buti na lang nung time na yun, yung teacher ko, pinagtanggal ako. And so, I, ha- I had hope. Pero, pag drawing na ang project sa class, mabait yun sa akin. Kasi magaling mag-drawing eh. Pero, every time there's an opportunity, magsasama siya ng kaklase just to bully me. Sad part of my life. You know, to be honest, their words hurt. And these words don't just stay on the surface and goes away immediately. No, it doesn't happen that way. It goes deep in the heart. And many times, tayo, pag nabuli tayo, minsan ine-embrace natin kung ano yung sinasabi ng iba. Pangit tayo. Sige, tanggapin mo, pangit na ako. Okay? Uh, so are you bullied in school? Remember this. I want you to remember this. Do not let other people's words dictate who you are. Because you are what God says who you are. And you are His son. You are His daughter. And you remember that. Because whoever says that you are pangit, that you are worthless, you are not. Because you are worth, worthy of Christ's death on the cross. Diba? Amen? That's why Paul shared with us how we should use our words the right way. And this is our main passage for the, uh, the start of the series. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It's before chapter 3 and after chapter 5. Okay, but if you are you have your Bibles with you, please go to that uh, cha- uh, book, Ephesians 4:29, and you can just highlight that phrase. So don't use foul or abusive language. Sabi dito, don't use foul or abusive lang- language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. What's that one point that I want you to remember? Simple. Words are powerful. Use it wisely. Can you just tell your seatmate? Words are powerful, use it wisely. When God created the earth, He specifically chose a nation to be holy as He is holy. When Jesus came, He chose a holy priesthood, a people called to be holy. To be holy is actually to be different, to be set apart from this world. Being holy or different means not just in our actions, but also in our words. If you're a follower of Christ, how you use your words should be different from this world. Ephesians 4, chapter 1. This is the context. It starts with, I beg you, my brethren, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. And Paul, before he, he tells us this verse, don't use foul language, he starts with this. Lead a life worthy of your calling. <coughs> what does that mean? For you have been called by God. Being called by God is different compared to being called by a school to represent your school as a delegate to a leadership camp. It's a whole lot different compared to being called by your club to represent them in a competition. Being called by God simply means you represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this world, not in your ways, but in His ways. It means you will represent Him not just by your actions, but also by your words. And your words should be His words. Your actions should be His actions. That's why you are called a Christian because you follow Christ. You imitate Christ. Tama ba? 
Ang Christian ba ngayon, iba na meaning, you follow just about anyone else? No, being a Christ follower means you follow every aspect of Jesus' life. That's who you are. Tell your seatmate right now. Convict mo yung katabi mo. Christian ka ba talaga? <laughs> if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, you should act like Christ, you should speak like Christ, you should live like Christ. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. Question, how are you using your words wisely? Are you breaking or building? Are you healing or killing? Why is it important to talk about words? Number one, every person uses words. Every person will use words to communicate, to tell someone. Um, just an activity for us. Look at your seatmate right now. And tell them, hi. I miss you. Sana next week mag-meet kayo. <laughs> Di ba? See, everyone can speak, right? Everyone can speak. Every person uses words. We use words daily. We use our mouth to speak words. We use our fingers to type and write words and post it on FB. We use words daily. If everyone uses words, the question is, how do you use it? If you evaluate the words that's been coming out of your mouth or your fingers, how are you using it? Is it breaking people or building people up? Number two, every word comes out of sinful mouths. Let's read James chapter 3. Yan, nababasa naman ang lahat, di ba? Sa likod, nababasa niyo. Okay, let's read this. One, two, three, go. Or take ships as an example. Go. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Tingin ka sa katabi mo ngayon. Poison daw yung words mo. <laughs> poison daw yung words mo. Okay. That's why this passage is warning us. This passage is warning us to be careful how we use our words. Because it can kill or it can heal, it can break or it can build. We have to be careful of the words that comes out of our mouth because it is deadly. It is evil. Okay? Now, number three. Every word will be taken into account. Tell your seatmate, every word that you use you will be accountable for. Every word that you will use, you will be accountable, accountable for. Matthew chapter 12. Let's all read this. One, two, three, go. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Matakot ka. Okay? Matakot ka na kung anong gagamitin mo. Okay? Because sabi dito, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. You will be judged for the words that you use. God will judge every careless word we say. So tell your seatmate right now, use your words wisely. Use your words wisely. What should we do? First, ano yung one point natin? Words are powerful, use it wisely. So let's focus on our main passage for today, Ephesians chapter 4. Don't use foul or abusive language. What are foul and abusive language? While I was preparing for this, I, will, I was researching for many kinds and categories of words that are foul and abusive. But before that, I will share with you a story of Abraham Lincoln. It started in 1842 when Abraham Lincoln publicly ridiculed an obnoxious politician named James Shield to the local newspaper. The town roared with laughter. Natawa sila sa sinulat ni Abraham Lincoln. The town roared with laughter, but Shields was a proud man, so he angrily challenged Lincoln to, a, to fight a duel to the death. Lincoln was obviously opposed to dueling. 
but he was forced into it after publicly criticizing Shields. Minutes before the duel began, Lincoln nervously held his sword, awaiting to fight for his life, but by sheer luck, the duel never happened. It was called off at the last minute. Lincoln took a huge sigh of relief. He could have lost his life all due to this stupid public ridicule. Needless to say, he learned a valuable lesson here. Never again publish an insulting letter. What are foul and abusive languages? Let's define it to better understand it and to stay away from it. Number one, name-calling. Name-calling and trading insult for insult. Sabi nito, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Can, we, can all the beautiful ladies read this with me? Uh, hindi, lahat, lahat, ng, lahat ng babae dito. Beautiful, okay? <laughs> Sabi niya, beautiful lang, ha? <laughs> words, bro, words. We're talking about words today, okay? <laughs> so, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Can, we, can all the ladies read this? One, two, three, go. Don't repay evil for evil. Yon. So, what should we do now? Pay them back with a blessing. If someone is name calling you, tell them, I'll pray for you. Okay? <laughs> I'll pray for you. Um, what will God do? What would Jesus do? In this situation, if you, if you don't insult them and you bless them, God will grant you his blessing. And that's written there. It's said there. Now, you know what God. So don't copy the insulter, be an encourager. Okay, don't, no, don't name call. Sino dito mahilig mag-name call? Huwag mo na itas kami mo. Baka magalit yung buong ano. <laughs> but don't name call. Don't, tell, uh, don't call people other names beside their own names. Okay? Call them the, their right name. Number two, inaccurate labeling. What is inaccurate labeling? It is associating a person to a negative group, calling them maybe stupid, calling them maybe crazy or weird, or calling them ment mental. You call them nigga, okay? <laughs> or you call them, uh, uh, minsan yung iba, sobrang lupit eh, ang sama. Kin tinatawag nyo ng demonyo. Di ba? Di ba? So it's associating a person to a negative group, calling them these things. Tinawag mong demonyo, wala namang sungay yung taong yun, di ba? So, an issue is all about what Kenyon Martin said about Jeremy Lin's dreads. You know that issue? You know how Jeremy Lin responded. It's all good. You definitely don't have to like my hair and are definitely entitled to your opinion. Actually, I am legit grateful for you sharing it, to be honest. At the end of the day, I appreciate that I have dreads and you have Chinese tattoos because I think it's a sign of respect. And I think as minorities, the more that we appreciate each other's cultures, the more we influence mainstream society. Thanks for everything you did for the Nets and Hoops. Had your poster up on my wall growing up. Burn. <laughs> Di ba? Parang nagiba yung mood eh. Words. That's how powerful words are. And, uh, and you know what? Lin's kind words turned that conversation around. It made Kenyon Martin feel guilty. It changed a word that tears down to a word that builds up. That should have happened. Every time we encounter unhelpful words or discouraging words, we should respond with helpful ones. We should respond with encouraging ones. So that's for number two. Number three, sarcasm, ridicule, and mockery. Many people do this. They mock other people for their disability. Yeah, they do that. When they see someone, they, they talk uh, uh, about this person. Sino mo yung, sino mo yung ano niya? Cleft palate niya. Sino mo yung, alam niyo yan, yung may hati siya. Alam mo, may, bro may brother ako na Down syndrome. And whenever someone uh, looks at my brother, parang disgusted, ako rin disgusted sa kanila. <laughs> okay? You, you shouldn't do that. Okay? Me, I have this story. I have a big nose, right? Right? Um, and I can't change that. I have a big nose. I'm an American. Okay, no, I'm not. <laughs> People call me New Zep Man when I was young. But I can't change that. You're looking at my nose right now, and for me, it's totally beautiful. Okay? People mock other people. 
That's the biggest problem. People mock other people because of their imperfections. But what can they do? None. So judgment is on them. You know why? God made my big nose. And they mock the nose my God created. So talk to my maker. Ganun lang yun. Okay? They mock you for something, for an imperfection. Um, you tell them, talk to my creator. Don't talk to me about it. Talk to my creator. I love my nose, guys. I love it. If I am music man, tinanggap ko na yun. Okay? Tinanggap ko na na ako si Rudolph the Red Nose nung Christmas. <laughs> Seroso, lahat na ng name ko uh, tinawag sa akin. Don't mock people. That's my point. Don't mock people. Don't ridicule their disability. Don't ridicule their imperfections. Don't mock them. Okay? Be kind to them. Number four, blaming and exaggerated attacks. Like in Adam and Eve's story, di ba? Uh, Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent, okay? Blaming, blaming game. Often, it is coupled with exaggerations such as, lagi ka na lang nasa games mo. Sino dito addicted sa games? Sinasabi ko sa inyo, lagi ka na lang nasa games mo. <laughs> lagi na lang, di ba? Or, di ka naman naglilinis ng kwarto mo, lagi ka na lang ganyan. Ayan. Blaming or in exaggerate mo yung, yung attack mo. Okay? That's unhelpful. That is discouraging. Number five, griping or complaining. Sino dito mahilig mag-complain? Huwag niyo na itas ng kamay. Okay? Philippians 2.14, can all the, the men, read this, one, two, three, go. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Sabi mo sa katin mo, don't complain. Ito ah, who here has posted a complaint in social media. <laughs> Who here has posted a complaint in social media? Yung nasa restaurant ka, hindi ka si nerve well nung uh, waiter, isusulat mo yun sa social media mo. Tapos sasabihin, huwag na kayong bumili dun. Lalo na yung pangalan ni Juan de la Cruz. Huwag yung puntaan yan. Di ba, may ganun tayo, we complain in social media. Question. Ano yung sinulat mo negatively about someone? Maybe it's about your D-group leader. Oy. Maybe it's about uh, Pastor Marty. Maybe it's about other leaders like the government, right? Maybe it's about a restaurant nga or your school. Meron kayong complaint sa schools nyo. <laughs> okay. Pero, is that the right avenue? Is putting it on Facebook the right avenue? Does it help? Does it encourage? You ask that question. Does it help if I write on my Facebook wall about this principal or this teacher? Does it help? Does it encourage? I'm challenging you guys and evaluating your words. Because many times, dahil nga online generation, dahil nga Facebook generation, kung ano-ano lang isusulat natin sa wall. Bahala na lang kung sino matamaan. Bahala na lang kung sino masaktan. Di ba? That is not godly. That is not helpful. That is not encouraging. So don't you realize that complaining indirectly doesn't solve any problem. It just creates more complainers. Parang ang ginagawa natin, we're saying to other people, halika, makisama ka sa complaints ko. Ikaw rin, baka may complaints ka, sabihin mo rin sa Facebook. It's just like that. You're not helping the society. You're not helping the world. But you're helping yourself be feel good about yourself. And you know what? I want to apologize. Because I too do that. Whenever fiber is disconnected, I complain. PLDC. Okay? <laughs> I do that. So, I apologize for doing that. I will not do that. While I, you know, while I was preparing, this is a convict ako. Kung ano, ako rin pala, sinasabi ko PLDC. Okay? But I'm sorry. Because that's completely discouraging. And I will not do that anymore. Pag nakita nyo, na sinulat ko yun sa uh, Facebook wall ko, i-rebuke nyo ako. Okay lang. Seryoso, i-rebuke nyo ako. But, right here, right now, I will not do that. I will not complain. Okay? So let's not gripe and complain. That's number five. Number six, destructive criticism. Destructive criticism. Remember yung uh, kay Lincoln and James Shields? That's this totally destructive criticism. 
Okay? Uh, that was a mockery of another person. And what happened? Napunta sa duel. Buti na lang hindi natuloy. Destructive criticism is not useful to anyone. Be constructive. That's why there is constructive criticism. Be constructive. Destructive criticism is like complaining but without the solution, without the resolution. Constructive criticism's purpose is to build up. You have a speaker in front of you. Tell me what's wrong with me. Is it my nose? No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, if you have a problem with what I say, said here, tell me. And tell me what can I say, uh, how can I say it properly. That's how you do it, constructive criticism. And many times, we receive destructive criticisms that don't even go straight to us. That's the, the sad part of life. It would be better that if you have a problem with a person, talk to that person first. Hindi yung gagawa ka ng group tapos pag-uusapan nyo doon. Okay? Di ba? Maling-mali. Hindi kristyano yun eh. Maling-mali yun. What should we do? In Matthew chapter 18. Ayan. In Matthew ta- chapter 18, this is a guideline that, uh, that was given to us. And so can we all read this? Verse 15. 1, 2, 3, go. that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you a Gentile and a tax collector. This is a guideline for us. Sadly, we skip instruction number one. What is instruction number one? If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. You don't go to the leaders. Go and tell him directly. Between you and him alone. Not between you and the leader and him. What's the first instruction? You have a problem with your digo leader? Talk to your digo leader. Directly. Don't ask your lolo digo leader, Lo, yung anak mo eh, naglolo ko. Hindi, kausapi mo. You should be the one to talk straight to that person not go to another person who is not part of the solution. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that a proper guideline that we can do here in Elevate? Okay, yes. Okay, so, because many Christians skip the, uh, number, the first instruction eh, because they can directly talk to, the, to those on top. Let's not do that. If you have a problem with me, a problem with uh, Pastor Marty, a problem with any full-time worker, talk directly to us. We don't bite. Okay, we don't bite. We love you guys. And if you love us so much too, it's loving to tell us if there's any problem with us. Diba? Diba? Huwag na yung mahiya. Diba? Okay. So, tell your seat right now. Talk to the problem first. Okay? <laughs> if, you, if your D-group leader is a problem, talk to your D-group leader. So, please, don't destroy others. Build them up. Talk to them directly. If they don't follow through, do what's written in Matthew chapter 18. Okay ba yun, the guideline? If they don't follow through, if they, if they don't accept the correction, do what's written in Matthew chapter 18. Now, number seven, angry words including threats and revenge. Who here loves uh, movies that have a revenge plot? Grabe isa. Ako, ako. <laughs> Di ba? Ako, ako mahilig ako sa ganun. Kaya medyo kailangan umiwas ako eh. Kasi pag nanunood na ako, tapos magre-revenge na, lalo na yung Taken. Sino din napanood nila yung Taken? Grabe, pag binububog na niya, paano ako rin, sige na. Grabe, ako rin naiinis eh. <laughs> Para ako rin gusto sumapak eh. Dahil inan yung anak mo eh. May ginawa sa anak mo, di ba? <laughs> so, minsan may ganun. Uh, so, angry words including threats and revenge. Words that you shout will not be heard clearly. Words that you shout will not be heard clearly. Better a kind conversation than a heated, angry word. Sino dito nakikipag-away sa kapatid nila? Taas ang kamay. Sino dito nakikipagsigawan? Sa kapatid nila, ayan. Sa tingin nyo, naintindihan ng kapatid nyo yun? 
<laughs> Kahit sa, sa marriage ko, kami ni wifey, whenever my wife um, corrects me, it's useless really if, he shouts at, if she shouts at me. Because hindi ko talaga naiintindihan yung sinasabi niya. Okay? <laughs> It's either you tell me kindly and that will change the mood and helps me listen a lot. And many of us, shouting at another person will not really help that person understand what you're saying. I have a temper and I have learned and compared angry correction with kind correction. Truly, a kind correction is better than angry words. I, um, there's what happens daily, every, every time I go home. I usually come home in a war zone play area. My children um, completely, uh, you know, it's chaos whenever I go home. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to even say, kasi si stress ako eh. every time, when you want, if you want to go home, you want to go home to a place where it's clean, where it's peaceful. But when I go home, it's a war zone, totally a war zone. And when I had my first uh, child, my son, I usually had that temper na pag nakikita ko madumi yung bahay, nainis ako. And, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will raise up my voice for my son to clean up the house. And that's a problem. My son wouldn't do that. Kumbaga, even if I do that, the next day, magulo pa rin yung bahay and it doesn't resolve anything. You know what I realized? I changed my ways. I changed it. I didn't shout anymore. I didn't raise my voice. You know what I did? Every time I come home with a war zone play area, this is what I would tell my, my son, my son. If you fix your toys daily, you will get 100 pesos by the end of the week. Hmm. Binago ko. Nag-iba nga. <laughs> and it's... It is true. Nag-iba nga. When I change my ways, mas naintindihan niya, mas nag-gets niya. So every time na lang na magpapalinis ako na, alam na niya ang gagawin niya. That's how you do it. Kung may 100 pesos ka. <laughs> Nay, pakilinis naman yun. Ito, 100 pesos. <laughs> Again, angry words, threats, revenge are pointless. Use words that will build others up. And that's our whole point for this topic today. Use words that will encourage Use words that will be helpful. So don't use angry words. Number eight, arguments where you seek to win so as to maintain power. See, dito, mahilig mag-games. Yan, tasa kamay, be proud. Yung mga magula, nakita niyo yung mga gamers dito, yan. See, dito, mahilig man trash talk. Please, don't be proud of it. <laughs> grabe kayo, grabe. Don't be proud about it. Okay. Unhelpful nga yun eh. Discouraging nga yun eh. I once played the game, tapos yung nasa chat, puro na lang, alam mo nasa chat uh, stream, puro mura. Grabe, sabi ko, ayoko na maglaro. Kasi, grabe no, parang maglalaro ko na lang, masisira pa araw mo. Okay. So, so doon sa mga nagtatrash talk dito, just to discourage someone, just to make someone's game uh, pangit, don't do that, please. Let's be fair with one another. Um, so, even in playing uh, basketball, meron ganyan. Uh, if nanonood kayo yung mga NBA, meron trash talking yan nangyayari. And um, you know what should you, you should do? If you are experiencing things like that, you mute it, okay? And don't butt, butt in anymore. Because you don't need to trash talk to make them feel bad and you feel good about yourself. Remember, ito yung kailangan yung uh, maalala. God accounts for every careless word you write and you say. Alalaan niyo yung lagi. That God accounts for every careless word that you say. You will be judged for it. At judgment day, okay? So don't be careless. Use the right words. Number nine, deception lies in manipulative speech. These are unhelpful. Sometimes people deceive or manipulate to get a situation to their favor. Malamang, meron, di, meron, uh, meron tayo dito na ginawa na natin yon, So that it will be favorable for us. Let's not do that. Because the devil does that to get us to sin. Tama ba? The devil deceives us to thinking that and lies, uh, lies about sin, manipulating us by telling us sinning is pleasurable and good. 
So don't deceive, don't lie, don't manipulate the situation. Let God take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel. Diba? And God's plans take its course. Because many times when we manipulate the situation, that is saying to God, that is telling God that, God, I don't trust you. That's why I have to do this. And so don't do that. If you truly have faith in God, let God, just pray and let God do the rest. Let go and let God. Let go of that person and let God. Diba? Let go and let God. So deception lies in manipulative, manipulative speech. Number 10, gossip and slander. Who here likes to gossip? Don't raise your hand. Gossip and slander spread partial truths mixed with falsehood to make the other person look bad. And that's not good because it's bad. Sometimes gossip and slander may be true, but the one you're telling has no need to know the information. It's been, it, that person doesn't help, doesn't solve the problem. Some people do this. Even in D groups, they, we do this, huh? So don't do this. Ang gagawin nyo? Oh, guys, let's pray. We can we pray for so and so for this sin that he did? Let's pray for this other person who just uh, cheated on an exam. Let's, lahat na, uh, lahat ng D group, pinag-pray niya, ang bait niya, pero ginosip niya. Okay, di ba? Ang bait-bait mo. Sana kunin ka na ni Lord. <laughs> That's bad, okay? Don't gossip and slander. We do that in, in D groups. Let's pray for this person kasi ginawa niya itong masamang to. Ginawa niya itong masamang to. No, let's not do that. Don't gossip or slander even in D group prayer times about people not part of your D group. Okay? So let's not do that. Number 11, profanity. Cursing and even using God's name in vain is profanity. This is what I realize. Young people today, even Christians, fail because they curse. Fail in using the right words because we curse. Pag, na, pag umiinit ang ulo mo, di ba? Nagmumura ka. If you are called by God to be holy and different, don't curse. Ito, do you have the habit of saying this frequently used expression? Hindi yan. Hindi ako. <laughs> Can you show the slide? Okay. OMG. Di ba? We sometimes use that, that phrase. Oh my. That's completely wrong. Stop that. Because it doesn't glorify God and you're breaking a commandment using God's name in vain. A simp- you may think that it is simple, but to God, it's not. It is His name. So don't use God's name in vain. You know, my son usually watches YouTube channels. Yung mga surprise uh, packs, opening and all. Um, and you'll frequently hear these words, OMG. Um, my wife taught our son that it's wrong. And so we ask him to change it to, oh my goodness. So my son will, oh my goodness. Okay, like, you know, bago na, as in, marinig mo yung ko, oh my goodness, okay? That's better. Don't say, don't use God's name in vain. Okay? Don't use God's name in vain. Don't use profanity. Number 12, filthy talk and coarse jokes. That, in, a, in another term, sex jokes. Don't do that. You know why you shouldn't do that? Because sex is God's creation. It is sacred. You're mocking God's creation. So let's not do that. Okay? Let's summarize. 1 to 12. Number 1. What is number 1? Name calling and trading insult for insult. Number 2. Inaccurate labeling. Number 3. Sarcasm, ridicule, mockery. Number 4. Blaming, exaggerated attacks. Number 5. Griping, complaining. Number 6. Destructive criticism. Number 7. Angry words including threats and revenge. Number eight, arguments where you seek to win so as to maintain power. Uh, number nine, deception lies in manipulative speech. Number 10, gossip and slander. Number 11, profanity. And number 12, filthy talk and coarse jokes. What's that one point that I want you to remember? One, two, three, go. Words are powerful. Use it wisely. Now that we know the kinds of words that are not helpful, what kinds of words can we focus on to help others? Just six points in verse uh, 29. Let everything... You say, be good and helpful. Speak good and helpful words. 
What are those words? Number one, encouragement and praise. First Thessalonians 5.11. Can we all read this? One, two, three, go. Therefore. <clears throat> so therefore, encourage one another and build up one another. To encourage one another is like to give courage to that person. To encourage one another is to build that person up. That's a helpful thing. It doesn't destroy anyone. It doesn't mock anyone. It just helps the other person. So, therefore, encourage one another. Okay? So, encouragement is very important. Can you think of something right now that will encourage your seatmate? Sabi mo, ang ganda mo. Ang bait mo. Um, ang Christian mo talaga. Ano ba? Think about that. It helps. Seriously, it helps. Especially when that person is down. Especially if that person is depressed. An encouraging word will help them stand back up again. Okay? So encourage one another. Number two, appreciation and gratefulness. Decrease expectation, increase appreciation. Many times, we have an expectation sa seatmate natin. Umupo ka nga na maayos. <laughs> or wag ka nga mag-text and text. Or pag si Pastor Bong yan, hindi natutulog. Meron, bang, meron ka bang katabi natutulog? Okay? <laughs> Di ba? We have an expectation. Let's change that. Let's increase appreciation. Always decrease expectations, increase appreciation. It's like this. Be always positive. Be always positive of that person. Many times, we are filled with negative things, thinking of just one person. It destroys them. You know, you, uh, you know how you, uh, it will help them? Then appreciate them. Appreciate them that once annually, at least there is that, that one time na on time sila. Okay? Or one time na uh, mayroon silang ginawang kabutihan sa kapwa nila. Encourage them. Through that, appreciation, gratefulness. So, number three, loving words. Alam niyo ito, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, uh, 4 to 7, love is patient and kind, love is not jealous. Use patient words that don't demand, okay? Lose, uh, use patient words, use kind words, nice words, non-sarcastic nor intimidating words, and use gentle words that will calm an angry voice. So use loving, loving words. Number four, Scripture. Do you read your Bible every day? Parang dito lang yung quiet time. Dito ba quiet time? Okay? Parang ayaw nyo tanggapin na quiet time kayo dito. Okay, lahat ba quiet time? Yes. yes! Okay. So use the Scripture. You know how can you use the Scripture? Use it so that it will help someone. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. When one is down or depressed, use scripture that has spoken in your life to encourage them. And the word of God is ready to, to teach, to reprove, to correct for training in righteousness. And so you use the scripture that God has used in your life. Number five. Words of loving correction when needed. We must correct lovingly. Tell your seatmate, rebuke in love. Use the sandwich method. Okay? Alam mo sandwich method? Kiss, kick, kiss. Kiss. Ang guwapo mo. Pero ito yung mali mo, pero ang guwapo mo pa rin. As simple as that. <laughs> simple ano lang yung illustration, di ba? Ganun yun, um... Kware, the problem with that person, late siya. Okay? So, isip ka ng bagay na ma, yung, you can appreciate that person. Alam mo, bro, ang galing, uh, ang, whenever we have the group, ang ganda yung mga sineshare mo eh. And you know what? That's helpful for your D group or for your D group mates. But you know what? What I realized and what I, I evaluated, you're always late. Sana ma-improve mo yon yung pagiging late mo. But again, again, bro, I hope that you will continue to share your thoughts. I hope that you will continue to share your love. They're D-group mates. Oh, di ba? Kiss, kick, kiss. 
Mag-ingat ka rin sa kick. Minsan yung kick mo talagang tadyak, eh, no? <laughs> so, ingat ka rin. Yung, yung, when you kick, when you kick someone, kind words pa rin. <laughs> hindi, hindi yung, uh, yung pag sinabi mo, magpapangamatay na yung tao. Okay, hindi ganun. Kiss, kick, kiss. Uh, kind words pa rin. So, words of loving correction. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 to 25, ang sabi dito, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach, and be patient with difficult people. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo ngayon. Difficult person ba yan? Okay? Malamang, yung mga D-group leaders dito, merong difficult D-group member. Okay? In verse 25, Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Because God is the one who will change the person at the end of the day. Okay? Amen for that. Number six, and this is the last one, prayer. James 5, uh, verse 16, can we all read this? One, two, three, go. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Pray for one another. Especially pag merong nag ng, ng, or merong uh, nag-share lang sa'yo ng problema niya, and uh, sa totoo lang, ayaw niyang humingi ng uh, advice sa'yo, you just pray for that person. Okay? Minsan kasi pa nag-share uh, ka pa ng opinion mo, nasisira lang araw nila eh. And so, pray for that person. When someone has a problem, you don't know the right thing to say lalo, Many times, praying for them is the right answer. Let God speak to them by praying for them. Okay? Words have the power to break. It can build us. It can heal us. It can kill us. That, that's, that's word. Words have power. So how will you use it? How would you glorify uh, God through your words? As I close. And so I will call on the music team. As I close. I know very simple uh, sharing with you guys. As I close. There's this story of a great painter Name, uh, his name is Benjamin West, okay? And he was a young boy. He decided to draw a picture of his sister. So he got out bottles of ink and succeeded in making, is it a beautiful picture? No, he made a total mess. When his mother got home, rather, rather than get angry with the mess, you know what the mother said? What a beautiful picture. And then she kissed him. Later in life, Benjamin West said, that kiss made me a painter. And look at his paintings, the paintings that he made. This is Benjamin West. Galing, di ba? Again, what's the main point for this topic today, for our topic for today? Words are powerful. Use it wisely. Lastly, I'll close with this simple poem by T.J. Bach. A careless word may kindle strife. A cruel word may wreck a life. A bitter word may hate instill. A brutal word may smite and kill. A gracious word may smooth the way. A joyous word may light the day. A timely word may lessen stress. A loving word may heal and bless. My prayer is that you'll use your words to glorify God, to help others, not to bring them down. Can we all stand up, please? And simply just do this. One encouraging word can change a life today. Let's encourage one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we, we thank you for this reminder. Words are totally powerful. We can break someone. We can build someone up. We can heal someone. And even kill someone with our words. But we are Christians, Lord. And so teach us to use words that are helpful. To use words that are encouraging. Encouraging to anyone who is down. Anyone who needs building up. I pray, Lord God, that as one congregation, as an elevate, elevate main, we will be known for being kind, for speaking words of encouragement, for, for building each other up. I pray, Lord God, that in this family, no one will be down. 
LV1. We'll be standing up together, helping each other. And so we just uh, surrender all our problems to you. Anything, Lord God, that's in our minds right now, distracting us, hindering us. Help us, Lord God, that even in our D groups, that it will be a source of love. It will be a source of encouragement to us. Holy Spirit, help us to apply all of these things. Help us to change our ways. Help us to change kung ano yung nasanayan na namin. I pray, Lord God, that at the end of the day, when we say we are a Christ follower, we will truly follow your words, your actions, and your life. We love you, Lord, so much. And thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful series. We love you so much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.